Good evening and welcome to service this evening. By way of announcements, let's don't forget uh, home prayer meeting is going to be at Sister Barbara Jean Woolard's uh, this Tuesday at 10 a.m. And also the Easter Jam is coming. Though. That's going to be uh, Saturday, April the 16th, beginning at 10 a.m. And it's an event for the whole family. So please come out and uh, make plans to, to attend that and they, if they, if you would like to volunteer, see Zach or April, and they will get you a job to do. Um, we will be in revival with the McGregors. That's coming up April the 24th through the 27th. That's a Sunday through uh, Wednesday night. It'll, the services will be uh, 7.30 nightly and 6.30 on Sunday night, 11 on Sunday morning. But they're also having morning services Monday through Wednesday at 10 a.m., for a uh, Bible study and stuff, so come out and be a part of that. And, of course, youth camp will be in June this year. If you have a child that is wanting to attend youth camp, please see Sister Kim, and she will get them signed up for that. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's good to be back in the house tonight. Hallelujah. What a move this morning. What a presence. Let that presence keep right on flowing as we come together. Um, let us give him liberty tonight in this service. We want to lift up our uh, prayer request. We also want to continue to remember Sister Joyce Evans as she's still dealing with shingles. So let's pray and keep her lifted up in our prayers. Also, Sister Tina and Brother Ronnie Whitley, they're having sinus problems, sinus infections, and so they desire our prayers as well. Um, are there any that you would like to speak now to add to our prayer list for tonight? Praise the Lord. Any unspoken requests tonight by uplifted hand? Thank you, Lord. Like I said, let's continue to move and press into his presence tonight. There's great and mighty things that he has called us to do and to be and expects us to walk in obedience. So just let that be your prayer, Father. Lord God, let us move in what you've called us to do and who you've called us to be tonight. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Sister Jennifer. Stand with us tonight. We'll take these needs to God in prayer. I think if you were here this morning, you're like everybody else. Wow, what a move this morning of God. I mean, he just he just showed up, showed out. I'm telling you what, it was just marvelous. But I'm expecting something just uh, that great tonight because that that's him. That's just God. He is so great, so wonderful. Holy God, we come before you tonight. God, we thank you for the privilege again to be in your house. God, we thank you for the privilege to call upon your holy and righteous name this night. Dear God, to bring these prayer requests before you tonight. God, there were many prayer requests this morning. And dear God, those that are uh, added to tonight's service, Father God, you just know each and every name. God, er each and every need that is associated with that name. God, you know each and every hand that's raised. God, you know what that need stands for when they raise that hand. And dear God, we bring them to you in faith believing. Dear God, because all things are possible to them that believe. God, we exercise our faith and our belief in you tonight, Father. God, we just pray for great and mighty things in this service tonight. God, we pray for an anointing, oh God. Father, an anointing from heaven. God, I just pray that heaven will invade Alleghe Church of God tonight, Father. Oh God, we need your touch. We need your blessing, Father. We want to glorify you in all that you do, Father. God, we just want to worship you tonight and praise you. Oh, God, we pray that your will will be accomplished in our lives tonight, Father. And, dear God, we just pray that we will all reach our divine destiny in you tonight, Father, through this service. Dear God, do a great and mighty work, I pray, Father. May the miracles be manifested in our lives, Father. God, as we glorify you, as we praise you. God, as we pour out, pour into us, I pray, holy God. Father, we thank you for all that you do. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and let the church say amen and amen. Please remain standing. Let's worship. Oh 
sang this song a couple weeks ago. But we're going to sing it tonight specifically for Sister Sylvia. She wasn't here then. She was having some health issues. She wanted to hear it. Yeah. 
Yeah, that song there hit us all, didn't it? You know what? When you need him in the midnight hour, he shows up right on time, don't he? Yes. Hallelujah. I'm telling you what. Sister Paula, can you do third verse one more time? Just one more time. I called him out an old time or two, and I fell down. especially in the special offering. What a blessing it is when we can help one another, amen, and lift one another up. You know, uh, he's, uh, he's always brought me through. I, I say it time and time again, but I can't stress it enough. You know, there's, uh, there's times that, uh, you, you know, we've all been there. We've all been low. I've, I've, I've had loss, and I've had gain. I've been up, and I've been down. God has always brought me through, amen. amen. He is constant, amen, and he is faithful, praise God, to us. David said, I've never seen a righteous forsaken or a seed out begging bread. There again, I've, I've had some low times, but I ain't never had a big God. He's always provided. He's always made a way. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we do thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to give tonight, Father. We bless you, Jesus, and we praise your name. We thank you for your presence here tonight, Lord, and what we experienced this morning, God. We just pray that you'll have your way tonight, sweet Holy Spirit, blessing this offering, Lord God, for the upbuilding of your kingdom. We pray in Jesus' name and bless this people. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you for the way that you give. Brother Tools will come around tonight and bless our hearts and sing under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. A couple of uh, a couple of weeks ago, the Lord blessed us with a message on Sunday night. He said to wait before me. 
just to summarize, he said, what you have never seen and what you long for is about to come to pass. I don't know if he's talking about a revival like we've never seen before. I don't know if he's talking about the rapture. Maybe he's talking about both. But he said it will not delay. It's on its way. He said that which I've set my word to accomplish, it will accomplish. He said wait. When you look through the scriptures, wait is in the Bible quite a bit. It's in Psalm 37, 9. Those that wait upon the Lord shall inherit the earth. Verse 34, wait on the Lord and keep his way and he shall exalt the lead to inherit the land. Psalms 27, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. He shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Finally, Isaiah 40, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. In the original Greek, in all four of these verses, the word wait, according to Strong's Concordance, means to tarry, to bind together, to expect, and to look. I'll admit, expectation is one of my weak points, spiritually speaking. But tonight, let us bind together with expectation. Let us look together for that revival like we've never seen before. Let us expect and look together for Jesus to step out of the eastern sky onto the clouds and to call us home in the twinkling of an eye. Let us expect together for all of our sorrows and our troubles on this earth to be left behind in the twinkling of an eye. It's been a long and weary road, brothers. It's been a long and weary road, sisters, but we've come too far to turn back now. We're almost home. We're almost home. Hallelujah. There's an excitement in the air. There's an expectation in the air because we are almost home. For many long years I've traveled this road Now I'm weary and tired Of carrying this load So often I'm tempted By Satan to bow But I'm too near home Turn back now, I'm almost home. As I stand by that river, my homeland I see. And the beautiful mansion that he's built for me. Just a few more days to labor. Then I'm gonna cross And I know what awaits me over there It's gonna be worth the call Well, I'm almost home I'm almost home I know my race Turn back now, I'm almost home. When my labor on earth, here I go.
us lay down And I'll go to receive My robe and my crown And it's goodbye dear friends That I've known on this way But I'll meet you again On that homecoming day Well I'm almost home And I can't turn back now I'm almost home And I can't turn back now I'm almost home Amen, amen. If you'll stand tonight, help us sing. Let's welcome the Holy Spirit into our presence tonight. Amen. Let's worship together. Blessed Holy Spirit today, Lord, as you brood upon us, Lord, and move amongst us, O oh God. Father, we pray for a divine encounter, an experience with the Most Holy One. Father, Lord, we just love you this, this evening, God. We thank you, Lord. What a wonderful day that you've given us, a day of worship set apart, Lord God. Lord, that your people have sanctified and set apart for the worship of the Most High God, great God, Jehovah, that rules and reigns. Lord, we honor you, Lord, in our midst this morning, this evening, God. 
Hallelujah. Amen today. Thank you all this evening. Galatians, I'm sorry, we're going to go to Ephesians first, chapter 5. I'm going to read one verse of Scripture. So good to be back in the Lord's house as it's already been alluded to uh, a number of times. Uh, we, I just am in awe of the presence of the Lord that filled this place this morning. And I'm just so thankful that the God of heaven would condescend. You know, the Bible's very clear. Barrel is very clear that there's going to be worship in heaven. We know that. And the Bible says that God is seeking those that will worship him in spirit and in truth. We are, I think, I'm thankful that all of us have different makeup. There are introverts here. There are extroverts. You know, as I've studied different personalities and different things. We take uh, assessments to figure out what kind of personalities we have in leadership conferences and different things, that it makes sense why people are the way they are and a lot of things. But no matter what your personality is, no matter what your background is, no matter what affiliation you are a part of, you are a worshiper of God. Psalm 150 said, Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Amen. It is always appropriate to praise the Lord. And uh, if you think it's going to be quiet in heaven, you are so wrong. It won't be quiet up there, amen. Matter of fact, there's a, there's a noise in there right now, and it kind of goes like this. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty that was and is and is to come, amen. Can you just imagine in your mind's eye those blessed cherubims that fly around, the living creatures that fly around and just cry night and day from eternity past in the present, eternity future, Holy, holy, holy. Let us read the words of the Lord this morning, this evening. I'm going to preach this probably different than I've ever preached it. I just feel the Lord messing with all, messing with me, not with me personally, but with my sermon preparation, that it's not going to go quite. Preachers will understand this. We prepare and we think the way that it's going to go. And I'm going to not preach from so much of a Pentecostal perspective tonight. Not if We are Pentecostals. My great-grandmama was, my grandmama was, my mama was, I am. And I'm praying the day I'll see my children and grandchildren, spirit-filled, speaking in tongues, worshiping God. But that's not what I'm talking about tonight. I'm talking about being with the, filled with the Spirit to accomplish what God has called us to do. Amen. Let's read one verse of Scripture. And he said, Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess. What a, what a contrast here. But he says, but be filled with the Spirit. As all heads are bowed and eyes are closed, I've thought about Genesis chapter 1, the very beginning of the Scriptures, God's revelation to man. It said, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. In verse 2, and the Bible said that the Spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the deep or the face of the waters. That lets us know tonight that the, at the very beginning of creation, the Holy Spirit was brooding over the earth. If you read that word moved, it's a word meaning brooding over the face of the deep, the waters. And I read the book of Revelation in chapter 1 when John is receiving the revelation of the end time events and the messages of the letters to the seven churches. John said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. And I don't know about you this today, but I've been in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Now, Father, we ask you, Lord, to take these words, your words, God, written by man but inspired by God, infallible and errant, god breathed. Take these words, Lord, and let, them, let us apply them to our hearts, God, tonight where you said, don't be drunk with wine, which it is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, Lord. May your people be filled tonight, God, Lord, in the name of Jesus. You can be seated. Thank all of you tonight. And oh, didn't that choir and that praise team? And Sister Paul, have you caught your breath yet? Brother Kenny said, can you do that again? I thought to myself, that's like asking an airplane to take off without any jet fuel. Amen. Praise God. I was getting wore out, and I won't even sing it hardly. Amen. Aren't you, aren't you thankful for this good singing and good worship and good music? Amen. Let's give God praise tonight. 
What a blessing it is to be in. And I know other churches have good singing. I, you know, we're not in, look, we're, never, we're not in competition with none of our brothers, are we? We're all on the same team. Us good Baptists. I had a good chance to speak with a good Methodist brother the other day. We were just talking about the things of God. And it, it's just, we're all on the same team trying to get to the same place, win the same laws. Come on, the lost people, amen. I love being in the kingdom of God. I, I, I just don't know how the world makes it. I don't know how the world, you know, I, I remember real quick, I had nothing to do with this sermon. I remember when I got saved and I started coming to church and, and, and I was so excited. And one of, the, one of the most fascinating things about being a new Christian was that there were all these people that loved me. There were all these people that were excited that I was coming to church and they were hugging my neck and telling me how happy they were for me. And, you know, I went from, you know, being out in the world to being having a family of God. Isn't the family of God so good? Amen. I, I know some of you are jacked up. I get that. That was a joke. I, everybody got a little serious. I know some of you are messed up. I know some of you got faults and you got things that all, all and, and things God. How many of you know that God's still working on us? Come on here. Y'all act like y'all all this. Come on. But let me tell you something. Thank God for our church family. We got one another's back, amen. And we're looking and, and moving. And as Brother Tool was saying, amen, I'm ready to get out of here. I'm, you know, I'm not living over in a corner saying, oh, God, I, you know, I'm so, I, I just can't wait for you to, to, to. No, I've got work to do while I'm here, but I'm living with an expectation. My spirit is bearing witness with his spirit, amen. Jesus, Paul called it our blessed hope. I never get tired of talking about the coming of the Lord. I never get I never get discouraged when I talk about the the imminent immediate if not immediate return of the Lord Jesus. How many of you want to see him come back? How many of you really want to see him come back? Hey, I want to see the Lord come. Hey, I'm living this life, amen, just to live again. Let me move on here. I want to talk to you. And again, I, I can't escape my Pentecostal heritage and uh, uh, the Pentecostal uh, faith that I'm a part of. But we, we oftentimes when we're talking about being filled with the Spirit, us Pentecostals always want to tie it into that speaking of in, in tongues and, 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 and the exuberant praise and the worship that we all love and, are, and, and love to be a part of it what is what makes us distinctively Pentecostal. But it, I'm, I'm not necessarily want to talk about that in effect as far as being filled with the Spirit. But being filled with the Spirit, being empowered. Jesus said it like this, you tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power power from on high. Can I tell you tonight, amen, if there's one thing lacking in the church world, and I mean the Baptist, the Methodist, the Episcopalian, the Presbyterian, and even yes, the Pentecostal, is there is the lacking of power, a demonstration of the power of God, amen. I'm telling you we're seeing an abundance of sin-sick people that surround us, people that are bound, people that are hurting, people that are lost, amen. And I'm telling you God is looking for a spirit filled church amen I didn't say a bunch of tongue talkers and I love I love to pray as when the spirit moves upon me and I pray in the spirit I love to hear the, the tongues being prayed I love the tongue and interpretation the giftings of the spirit uh, in today's church amen and I love all of that let me tell you something that's very important to us in our distinctive Pentecostal theology but I'm telling you what else I love is people that are full of God's spirit that love God and want more of God and are pressing in to what God would have them to do. There is no such thing as a part-time Christian. And I'm telling you that I believe that in the days that we're living in, there is a clarion call to the church, amen, to get plugged in like we've never been plugged in before. To really get in here and say, God, I'm going to serve you you can't do that without being filled with the spirit you got to have that god it is something that god does you know i don't know about you when i left this morning i was just overflowing i was hungry but i was overflowing i left here this morning i can honestly say it was good to be in the lord's house 
It was good to be around God's people. It was good to sing the songs of Zion. It was good to feel his presence, amen, the stirring that is with inside of us. One man, one writer of the Bible said it's like a wheel inside of a wheel, amen. Jeremiah put it this way. It's like a fire shut up in my bones. I like it when Samson, who was also a very jacked up individual who had a lot of issues in his life, but the Bible said that the Spirit of God would move on him. Come on, somebody. And he'd feel his presence and his anointing, and he was able to do great and mighty things. Come on, church. I'm here to tell you tonight that God is looking for you and you and you and myself, amen, to fill us with his Spirit, to empower us from on high, and to use us in this last great day outpouring, amen, and missional effort that the church ought to be doing. Come on and say amen. Involved in our uh, pregnancy center here in Washington, North Carolina, in our region, we we serve more than just here. It's not just a group of people that are, are just binded together. We 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 bind together because we are passionate about saving the lives of the unborn. And I'm telling you something right now: if you're a Christian and if you're not passionate about the unborn, you need to go home and pray. Because I'm telling you, one of the greatest sins against America today is abortion. One of the greatest sins of the blood, innocent blood being shed every day in America. And now, and, and I, and, and now we, we have a government that is in place that is probably more for abortion, more pro-abortion than any other government in the history of our nation. And I'm telling you right now, if we think as people of God that this crowd that is so pro-abortion and so anti-life in the womb, amen, if you think that they are not empowered and in, in, in encouraged in demonic warfare and in, 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 in emboldened of their new position, God's saying, listen, you you're not going to fight them on your own. God said, I'm going to have to take every pregnancy center. I'm going to have to take every church and every people, and I'm going to have to empower them and raise them up and say, not on our watch, amen. We're going to stand up, and we're going to declare that it's still wrong. Come on, I'm going to fight, and you're going to fight, and we're going to stand up, and we're going to proclaim, amen, that life begins at conception. Come on and say amen. It takes the spirit to get up with a backbone and tell a lost and dying world that. When we are being bombarded on every side, when we are being bombarded, I looked at a declaration, a proclamation from, from the White House on April the 1st or April the 3rd. And in that proclamation, the President of the United States speaking, it was uh, 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 recognized or recognizing the transgenders. You say, oh, brother, here you go again. Oh, I'm telling you, I'm, God's trying to raise up some spirit-filled people, somebody that have a backbone, amen. They're not just going to sit by the wayside and watch our nation go down a moral uh, and a, a moral sewer and in and a, and a, and a, and a sludge, amen, and going to stand up and say in that proclamation, he said, the President of the United States of America, we see you, transgender. The First Lady, we see you. The White House recognizes this, amen. I wish we had somebody in the White House that'll say, oh God, I'm laying on my face. Oh God, let thy spirit rest upon me, oh God. God, give me, Spirit of God, use me and guide me and teach me all to. Y'all not hearing me, amen. You think it's impossible? I'm gonna tell you, the devil's raising up people all around and they think that they're going to take over but God's got an army amen God's got an army like Gideon amen oh I'm going to tell you he's got 300 amen he's got 7,000 not, not bowed a knee to bail come on and lift your hands and bless him in this house we need to understand the move of the Holy Spirit the ministry of the Holy Spirit we as Pentecostals we got this thing it's just, as long as we can feel him and woo we can Shout a little bit, and y'all ain't going to out-shout me. I, made my, I, I tell you, I'm ashamed of myself. I'm ashamed of everybody in here under 55 years old. And some of you old ones. The Spirit got to moving. These old folks right here were dancing down the aisle. Come on here. 
shouting all over this place, young people sitting on like a bump on a log. I wish I'd have been at some of y'all's house the other night when Duke and Carolina were playing. Oh, when your team was, oh, when your team was playing, come on now, help me here. Dear God, we get excited. I wish we'd get excited about what God is doing. Praise God. God is trying to fill his people one more time and empower them for service. Oh, yeah. And I, you, know, I, you know, I thought to myself, I'm not in a competition, but bless God, they're running all around here. Sister Minnie, bless her heart. I, I thought she was going to break a speed record for senior adults. I'm going to enter, in enter her into the senior Olympics in the 100-yard dash. I'm talking about that right now. I'm talking about that spirit empowerment. God is looking for some people. God's talking to us tonight. God's talking to me. Man, I love to shout with you. I love to praise with you. Amen. I made up my mind a long time ago, man. I did. When I was a young boy growing up in the Pentecostal church, I thought everybody in there was crazy. I thought they were crazy. But you know what? There is something about the Spirit of God if he can make you shout, he can help you pray. Come on now. If he can help you shout and lift your hands and worship God, he can help your mouth talk right. Come on now. If, if the Spirit of God, if you can feel the Spirit of God in here when he's moving, we're worshiping the Lord, that same Spirit wants to give you the right attitude. He wants to give you words to say to a lost and a dying world. Amen. He wants to help you alone. He wants you to live that abundant life that we keep hearing about when Jesus said the enemy have come but to steal and kill and destroy. But he said I have come that you might have life and life more abundantly. Let's live that abundant life. God help me. You know it's kind of like a man that bought a, a story I heard in a sermon one time. A man bought a brand new car and he got it, got out there and sat in it. Never turned the key, just got in it, enjoyed the outside of it, enjoyed the interior, the, the new leather, the new smell of the new car. He looked at the tires and the rims and the, the exterior and all the bells and the whistles. He got out and went back inside. He came back in, got back out in the car, sat out there and finally said, why don't you start that thing and run it down the road? He said, well, I didn't even know it could move. He said, don't you know that there's a motor in there and that there's a key that you turn, ignition? I don't understand all the mechanical uh, aspects of it, but there is an ignition there that starts a chain reaction that turns that motor on and you can put that thing in drive. See, what's happened is not only is it happening in the Pentecostal churches, but it's happened in the churches across the land. We forgot there's a motor in this thing, amen? And that motor is the blessed Holy Spirit of God. Amen. He's the one that brought us to where we are now. This church would not be where it is without the blessed Holy Spirit. And if we're not, if we go any further, we'll go in the power and the anointing of Almighty God. This is not hype. This is not words. These are not just phrases that we preach that sound good. This is the absolute truth of God's word. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. It's by His Spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Somebody help me and say, Amen. Now, are you being filled with this spirit? It's not a Pentecostal question. This is Bible. All through the Bible, prior to the day of Pentecost, God moved on his people. God moved on the Old Testament prophets and the spirit of God. With, you know, I, I read in a, in a passage of Scripture in the Old Testament. I've already mentioned Samson. We look at Elijah. We look at Elisha. We look at Jeremiah. These men were moved on by the Spirit to proclaim God's word, God's judgment, God's statutes, amen. I think about the, the man Moses, the, the relationship that he had with God. I, I think about the uh, Joshua and on and on as I can see the, the, the fingerprint or the handprint of the Spirit throughout the Bible as he empowered his people to live this life and to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. I look at the, even the Lord Jesus Christ when he went in in Luke chapter 4 when he goes into the synagogue and he opens up the scripture and it falls to the book of Isaiah and he says the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He hath anointed me 
to preach this gospel. Come on and say amen. You say, well, Brother Bateman, I'm not a preacher, but I can tell you what you are. You're a spokesman for the true and the living God. And I can point you to a day. If you got saved, amen, the Spirit moved on you. He touched you. He came and he infilled. Y'all ain't helping me now. He infilled you, amen, and he gave you purpose. Anybody remember the day when it all changed? being with, filled with the Spirit. So when you get saved, the Spirit of God indwells you. It does. You're filled with God's Spirit when you get saved. You can't, you, can't, you can't get saved apart from the Spirit, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. He takes up residence. Let me tell you something, but what happens is this world constantly has a pull. This world constantly has a drag. This world constantly is always uh, uh, draining us. The Bible it, it speaks about the, the battle in, in Galatians chapter 5, I believe it beginning with the 16th verse, where it talks about the spirit, the flesh lusted against the spirit. There's this eternal battle or this momentary battle on this side of life that all of us have to deal with. See, I can tell you something right now. I, I, this paradox here, this oxymoron, I didn't call anybody a moron. That's just a big word. It means something that it just don't really make a lot of sense. Well, the Lord said, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. And I got to thinking about that, and I, I wrote some notes down. I don't know if I saw, heard this, or read this, or somebody had it in a conversation. But I, I believe it was a preacher told me, he said, I've had more trouble with people that are not filled with the Spirit than I've ever had with a drunk man. Think about that. See, if a drunk man, I know, I know, Taylor, I know. Some of y'all didn't get that. Because, see, when you're filled with the Spirit, your mind, you're, you're in lockstep with what the vision of the church is. See, I, I, I'm, I, I'm a student of human nature. I love to, love to watch people. I love to w uh, try to understand why people do what they do. I, I was watching some videos the other day on road rage. I always watch it with the sound on. But a man gets out, Brother Kenny, and he runs over there. And, and he was a pretty uh, muscular big guy. And he runs over there and he punches the window, the driver's side window, and smashes it. And then he takes some spray, some kind of, uh, what do you call it, mace, and maces the person. What causes a rational human being driving a car to get out of his vehicle and run over there and bust the window out of another vehicle? Oh, come on here, church. I'm telling you, because he has no self-control. He allows the flesh to rise up. And I'm telling you right now, Paul is telling us here, don't be drunk with wine. Don't be, in, uh, don't be influenced by the flesh. Amen. Don't let the flesh dictate how you act, how you worship, how you serve God. But be filled with the Spirit of God. I'll say it again like that preacher told me. He said, I've never, I've had more trouble with people that were not filled with the Spirit than I've ever had with a drunk man. We had a drunk when I was early on in my church, uh, in my home church. I won't name the name, but there was a man, bless his heart, he was troubled. He was troubled. He would come and he would sit on that back, back about where Brother Gary is back there, the very furthest back. He'd crunk, come in and he was drunk as a kudile. I don't know what a kudile is, but he was drunk as one. He come about every Sunday night, and you know, two or three times a month on a Sunday night, and many different people would go back, and I've gone back and talked to him. He was a hopeless alcoholic in the sense of the way the way the world looks, and I'd go back there, and he would reek of alcohol, and he would just sit back there and weep during the whole service. Never gave nobody a bit of trouble, but it was the so-called saints. It was a so-called spirit-filled crowd. You know, that religious crowd is so much spirit. You know, they're more spiritual than I am. Y'all ain't helping me here. Come on now. They're, you know, that, that deep, boy, they're deep here. 
But they, they you know, they, well, you know, we, we just can't get a hold. We listen. You get in here and you get a hold and get filled with the Spirit, and I get filled with the Spirit. We'll get in lockstep with one another. We'll get in one mind and one accord, and we can hear from God and know what God's plan and vision is for the Alley Good Church of God. I want somebody to say Amen with me. not what you do for God so much it's what God does for you and through you and I, I just have been praying this, but God put, I, put people put people Lord in my path Lord I want to be I want to make myself available because see there's such a pursuit of fleshly things I'm a big commitment guy I'm a big commitment guy. And what I mean by commitment, this is my church. You're my people. He's my Lord. This is my Bible. I'm committed to this way. I'm almost home, Brother Tool. I'm, we're, all, we're right there at the precipice. I'm going to serve God. I want to serve God with excellence. I want to serve God with passion. And I can't do that by myself. I need him to feel me. I need him to empower. Power me. You, re, you remember the, the story of the book of Acts on chapter 2? I know it's the day of Pentecost. But they went out, amen. It wasn't just about the talking in tongues. They were empowered. And the Bible says a little bit later on uh, that there were 3,000 people added to the church. Oh, they brought the disciples in and they saw, they saw that even the religious leaders of the day said, we understand that these men are ignorant. Back where I come, we say ignorant. They were ignorant and unlearned men, but they had perceived that they had been with the Lord. Come on here. They were spirit-filled, spirit-led, walking in the Spirit, talking. How many of you know that the Bible says that if you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh? Oh, I wish I had somebody help me tonight. Amen. So it's not what God we can do for God, but it's what God does through us. God said there, I want to I share three reasons why we're to be filled with the Spirit. I didn't say to be, I'm not talking about speaking in tongues tonight. I'm not talking about the gifts of the Spirit in operation in the church. You know where I stand, where we stand on that. I'm not talking about that. But I am talking about a Holy Ghost empowerment, a Holy Spirit empowerment. He said you be endued with power from on high. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. What does it say? According to the power that worketh in us. Man, I want to be. Does anybody but me? I know I'm, it's a loaded question. Does anybody but me want to do the Lord's will? Does anybody but me want to do the Lord's work? Come on and say a sin, a sin with your mouth and your mind. Does anybody want to live a life that is spirit filled and spirit led and spirit driven? The Bible said that the Spirit of the Lord drove Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. This thing is woven all through Scripture. As I alluded earlier, this thing's not going to be easy. This thing's not going to be easy. We, we're talking about, when I talked about the, uh, the, the pregnancy center, they are, we're preparing for war there. Because I believe the days are coming when the government is going to do everything that it can to shut down any type of ministry, nonprofit like that, tax exempt ministry, that is doing that is taking a stand contrary to the word of God. Come on here. They call an unborn child in its mother's womb a mass of sales. God said, told Jeremiah, I said, before you were even born, I knew you. God knew me before I was even conceived. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Oh, I know I'm special. And I know some of you are saying you sure are. But I know I'm special in the sight of God. He knew me before I was even born. He watched over me as I was being knit in my mother's womb. Come on here. There's purpose and there's calling, amen. 
and he he watched over me as as I as, from a uh, from a teenager into an uh, early adulthood as I went further and further away from the things of God. But I could not escape the drawing and the wooing of his spirit. Church can need to be so full of the spirit when unbelievers come in. Oh, it, oh, I, I've told you this, and I don't say it much on Sunday mornings. But I I, I can't. I oh it, oh it just grates my nerves to have an unsaved person leave this service and say, oh, that was a good service. No, you missed it. Because I want there to be so much of the convicting power of the Holy Spirit that they are miserable. That they can feel the flames of hell. They can feel the brims on the breath of the devil on the back of their neck. But instead of the breath of the, of the devil on the back of the neck, the breath of the Spirit blowing through the church of the living God and bringing conviction to somebody where they don't leave here the same way, but they come to the foot of the cross and gloriously be saved. There are three reasons I, I'm going to give you before I close. For being spirit filled, number one, God has commanded it. Paul's writing, Paul writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Paul wrote it, but God said it. He said, "Be filled with the Spirit." And I'm not going to let any theologian, I'm not going to let any commentary, I'm not going to let any preacher, I'm not going to let any teacher, any Bible professor, I'm not going to let anybody try to convince me any, uh, look, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just an old country boy from down the road, amen, got a little bit of education, can read and write, do a little bit of math, amen, but I can read English, amen, and I read here in uh, Ephesians chapter 5, he said, be filled with the Spirit. It's not a suggestion, it's a command. Come on and say amen. Not get filled, but be filled. See, I can't do this, but God can. God can fill my tank up. Well, we, we can, and it don't cost us nothing like it does at the gas pump. This crowd, boy, the gas got down to three sixty nine. dollars Oh, praise God, gas is going, it's $3 too high now. I'm not going to get excited about get three dollars. My pants won't stay up. Kim tells me stop hiking my pants up. Can't help it. I'm going to tell you this feeling don't cost you. Cost you. It costs the Lord. But I'm going to tell you something. It's going to cost us everything to serve him. And that's where some of us are not getting. You hear me. I'm not going to be much longer. Some of us think that this is a part-time gig. Some of us think that we can, this, this, look, when, when we, the Holy Ghost said this morning, there are dark times coming. When dark times come, it's going to be a shaking and a sifting. You better be full of the Spirit. You better be, you better be full up. Kim don't, Kim don't like to pump gas, and I, I you know, I, one of the things I try to do is keep her vehicle filled up so she don't have to pump gas. She can pump it, but I do it for her. I like for that tank to be filled. I like for my tank to be filled tonight, full of the Spirit of God. When I'm low in spirit, I cry, Lord, lift me up. Come on and say amen. Number two is an obligation. It's how can we do what God called us to do if we're not spirit-filled? Do you think that any of the, oh, I know, I know, this singing and worship that we do up here, you know, not only is it good, not only is it their talent, there's something that's different here than there is in a lot of other places. Come on here. It's called an anointing. Y'all know the difference. You know the difference. Listen, there's a, I remember being a young boy and, uh, you know, I was raised old time holiness. Everything was wrong. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Everything was wrong. You know, I, did, I, I said, Lord, have mercy. This bunch, they don't believe in doing nothing. I mean, we went, boys went swimming. We wore blue jeans and a T-shirt, and we were the only ones out there. Come on. Women wear pants. Are you kidding? My mama was 40-some years old before she ever cut her hair. We had a singing one time, and they were singing at the church, and and one of those, one of the singers went out back, and I followed him out back, and I don't know why I did it, but he lit up a cigarette, and 
I said, dear God above, that lightning is going to strike and kill this man. That's the way I was raised. There's a difference between anointing and talent. We need anointing behind this pulpit. I didn't hear the Sunday school lesson this morning, but I heard it was a powerful Sunday school lesson. Amen. And I'm going to go back. If you didn't hear it, I want you to go back and listen to it. I'm going to listen to it tomorrow. Let me tell you something. There's anointing upon our teachers, our singing, our, our preaching of the, of, the, of, this, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we have to be full of the Spirit. If you're going to witness, well, before I talk about witnessing, you know, in, in this passage of Scripture, it talks about the wives being submitted to their husbands. I know that's going to make some of you nervous right now, but hold on. How does a wife submit to her husband? Through the Spirit. How does a, how does a husband love his wife like Christ loved the church? Through the Spirit. Uh, everybody's created equal. The, the, the white man, the black man, the brown man, the yellow. Everybody's created equal. We're all equal at the foot of the cross, but God has an order. Come on here. Come on here. God, God, put a, God puts a pastor to be the head of the church. Come on, I know some folks around here think they're in charge, but you, you're not. I ain't got a problem telling you that. I'm, I'm, a, sweet, I'm a sweet guy. But I know, I know God has order. They told me anything got two heads, a monster. I love my wife as Christ loved the church. Man, God put it on me there, didn't he? Wow. But God said it's possible through the Word. I can do it by the Spirit. Wives, submit to your husband the leadership, the spiritual headship of the home. Now, if your husband not the spiritual leader, then you have to be the spiritual leader, but you still have to submit to his authority in the home. Come on here. I'm not, preaching, I'm not preaching male chauvinistic stuff. This is Bible. It's God's order. But, man, I tell you, if I love, love on my wife like Christ loved on the church, man, we, we'll have a great relationship. She just got to work on that being submitted stuff. Amen. Now, we're committed to each other. Come on here. I said I'm big on commitment. I'm big on when I sign up for something, I'm all in. Come on here. I'm all in. When I signed up for the God's Army, I'm all in. I didn't, I didn't get in here to play church. I didn't get in here. I didn't come to Alley Good to, uh, to tiptoe to the tulips. I didn't come here, church, to, to, to waltz to until I retire. God forbid. Man, I'm empowered, filled by His Spirit. It's like a fire shut up in my bones. Amen. Come on now. My God, we got a job to do. You can't even worship without being filled with the Spirit. That's why so much of this stuff you see is not worship. It's a celebration of flesh. Did you hear me? Oh, yo, boy, you're on a soapbox and you're being critical. No, I'm not. To celebrate, God said, I'm, Jesus, Jesus told that woman, the Lord is looking for those who will worship him in what? Spirit, 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 and in truth. Come on here. You got an enemy. I'm close. I'm trying to. You got an enemy. Ephesians. Chapter 6 talks about spiritual warfare. Oh, don't even try to fight the devil. Come on here. Don't even try to fight the devil without being spirit-filled. You're you, you going to get in trouble. You're going to get in trouble. You know, that was that sorcerer tried to, wanted to, you know, saw the baptism of the spirit. He tried to buy it. And, and then Paul, Paul said, your money perish with you. You can't fight in the natural against the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness. Where? High places. 
This is war life. You know, I know I live down here with y'all now. I've been getting close to being five years, and I, I, I ride around just like y'all do on the back of some of the cars. Maybe you got it. I'm not talking about I might get me one of them stickers. They got bath life on them. Then they, some of them got river life. Oh, I like it. Another one is salt life. That's what I want to live, salt life. I want a house on the ocean. By, by the way, it's to be a great pastor appreciation gift. Amen. You know, every, you know, and there's nothing wrong. I'm nothing wrong with all that. But we maybe maybe we should put on the back of our bumper sticker, "War Life." This is war, people. This is war. You don't fight it in the natural. You fight it in the spirit. The sword of the spirit. We are spiritual beings. Let me tell you something. This old flesh is going to, it gets old, it gets decrepit, it eventually wear out, will die, but that soul and spirit will live. God's spirit lives with inside of us. That's why, you know, I, I tell some of these young guys, I sit down with them and look across them, and uh, they'll joke with me sometimes. They'll say, oh, man, I'm, I look. who are they talking to, Kenny? I'm the same person on the inside. Soul and come on here. The soul and spirit. And there's some, God works in that realm. Y'all ain't hearing me. Caleb was 85 years old when he finally got into the promised land. And he went to Joshua and he said, God said, God told Moses, this property, this mountain is mine. Come on here, because God said it. Everybody hear that? God said it. And he said, I'm just as good as I was 40 years, 45 years ago. I'm ready to go. It was full of giants, but it didn't bother Caleb. Caleb said, what God has given me is mine, and I'll go in the Spirit. I'm telling you right now, what God has promised, Allie Good, and you and I is ours, and it's not by might nor by power, but it's by my Spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Somebody give the Lord praise in his house. So it's war life. I remember the devil, the, the devil, the seven sons of Sceva. I was reminded of this the other night in revival. Seven sons of Sceva tried to cast the devil out. They said, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. Uh-huh. What else did he say? But who are you? The Bible said them, that demon-possessed man beat up on seven of them, run them out of the house bloody and naked. I bet they didn't try that again. And I'm telling you right now, I didn't come here to wrestle and fight against flesh. I didn't come here tonight, amen, to wrestle uh, against you in a fleshly or in a carnal way, amen. I come in here tonight not with a demonstration of enticing words with man's wisdom, but hopefully and prayerfully a demonstration of the power and the spirit of Almighty God, amen. This is war, saints of God. And if we're going to win the battle, we've got to be in the spirit and full of his spirit I'll close <laughs> that don't mean much right now but our opportunities are everywhere because I believe it's verse 14 let's go and I'll, I'm going to try to wrap this up wherefore he saith awake that thou that sleepest I'm in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 14 rise from the dead and Christ shall give thee light he said, wherefore, he said, see then you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. He said, redeeming the times, the time, because the days, these days are evil, people. Did you hear me? The days of evil. He said, wherefore, in verse 17, be ye not unwise, but understanding, listen, what the will of the Lord is. Now, the next verse is this one. Don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. Would you stand, Sister Ellen? Come on back to the piano.
I'm not going to deny that we're living in the evil day. We are. Amen. We're living in evil, evil day. Right now. We need a generation of spirit filled people. I want you to I want you to I want you to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and with the evidence of speaking in tongues. I want the gifts of the Spirit to be in operation in the church. But I'm not preaching about that now. I'm preaching about being empowered by the Spirit to do God's will. I want you to walk right and talk right and live right. God is looking for a complete commitment to Him. Remember what I'm teaching on. Many of you have not heard this on Wednesday night. Some of you here, thank you for coming all, whenever you can come. But I'm preaching on the temple. And I taught earlier about the body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. We are His temple. This house, this home is His home. And I'll close really this time with this. Any time that I have been invited to someone's house, they always tell me this generally. Make yourself at home. Whether they really mean it or not, I'm afraid that some of us don't. Lord, this is your house. Make yourself at home. Every room, every compartment. Kim and I travel often, sometimes more than Others less sometimes, but we'll travel and we'll be in someone's home. And they'll inevitably say to me, make yourself at home. That's trouble when you tell me that. Because I'm going in the cabinet. Kim says, stop. Did you mean it or not? Now, I know I've used this illustration before. Kenny Pitts might invite me to his house. Make yourself at home, preacher. I go back in his office and be going through his tax records. He don't mean that. He's what he's saying is make yourself at home, preacher. In my living room, you need to go to the bathroom. The refrigerator's got some water in it, Pepsi, whatever. But don't go in these other doors, my bedroom or my office. Come on, that's common sense. But we do the Lord that way. We say, Holy Spirit, thou art welcome, but not here. Not here. My clerk at Man's Harbor, he was with us a couple of weeks ago. Stayed Wednesday night. I hope he don't watch this because he won't like me what I'm about to say. He come visit me. I said, make yourself at home. Next thing I know, he's asleep on the couch. I know that's a little much. But he took me at, at my word. And God's asking us tonight, as all heads are bowed and eyes are closed, How many tonight will say, Lord, here's the key to every room in my house. Some will say, Lord, fill me with your spirit, but don't, don't, don't change my attitude. Fill me with your spirit, but don't change my anger. Fill me with my, your spirit, but don't deal with this area in my life. How many of you tonight will say, Lord, Here's the key. My house is your house. My home is your home. 